family how you doing and welcome to another my pet video today and uh, you know this one's gonna be a little bit of a boss guide uh, tips and tricks just to if you're really struggling with the map pack three bosses on the first dungeon this is the first dungeon guide I'm um, gonna show you the three mini bosses uh, if you're really struggling how to do them and kind of make them sort of ish cheating not really but like really making it a lot easier for the people that are struggling um with just like how to dodge their moves and mechanics and stuff like that i mean you can just fight them straight up full frontal run of them charging but i'm going to show you a couple of ways and you know just how to not die so much during game um i have the boss loot as well just to show you what the what the loot was what you can get and what it does but we'll get to that later um so obviously you're gonna have your gravitite from doing the quest book, obviously you've you've got your quest book, you've got your gravitite, and now we're doing the dungeon. Go away, sentry. So basically, what you want to do is find all your mini bosses first, and then what I do for the first one that I usually do is this guy, this guy right here, the sentry guardian. Um, where the platform is, make a box around him to encase him, and then at the front. Basically, you just need to leave like a one block gap. You can do two. He's like three high, so he won't be able to get out. Um, the tactics for this boss, basically he spawns a lot of stuff. He throws it onto the ground. Um, so you need to either make a platform to fight on so that he throws it below you and they can't damage you. Or you box him in and like all of the things he spawns are going to just be in like down here. Won't be able to do any damage to you because you're up here. Um, obviously you've got these little staircase you can get up and out. Just in case he does hit you, he does a lot of damage. I think it's, it's two hearts when you have full dark matter armor. So with full gravitite, oh yeah, he's going to do like four hearts if he hits you melee. And he's going to do a lot of damage. So you want to try and stay away from him as much as possible. Just whack him. It doesn't really matter. Gravitite sword pickaxe. Basically do around the same damage anyway. It's 250 health. And let's get going. So basically you want to hit him and just, just crouch on the edge. And he should get stuck. There's a little bit of a cheat. As you see, he does kind of bug his character out. So I mean like he will spawn some. You know, this is basically what he does. He just spawns a bunch of shit. And you dodge it. So it's not exactly like, oh my god, he's so hard. Uh, he is only a mini boss. So you just whack him dead. You know, it costs you a few blocks. You just whack him dead, and all these little guys will just be down there, and they won't be able to do anything to you. And that's basically the Sentry Guardian done. Easy. You know, it's, it's Mad Pack. You are meant to use every advantage you can get because it's Mad Pack. If you this is in hardcore, by the way, as well. Um, you know, there will be patches, there will be stuff like that, make stuff harder get rid of these kind of things these mechanics to so that you don't just easy wipe the bosses so we're gonna go to the next one that was the sentry garden this time this one i usually do second the host mimic the slider host mimic is basically kind of a mini boss of the main boss um uh, his tactics is basically gonna spawn cubes that can only move in one direction and they move twice that's the main thing he spawns, he throws them down, and then they can move twice in one direction. And they're going to hit you, and they do a lot of damage. His second phase, after throwing a lot of them, he's going to grow legs and run at you. He can move in any direction. And he's going to run at you and hit you, basically. You don't need to cheese this boss other than resetting him. He can't regen or heal. So, if you're falling low, just run away. He'll go back into his block mode, and you can regen up. And that's all good. I'll, I'll show you that now. So, like, you give him a couple of whacks. You walk away, just walk away. And you've done some damage to him. He resets. He just goes back into his block form and goes as far as you want up to him. That's fine. His health still stays the same. So, you're like, yeah, regen up. Took too much damage. Fall back. Heal up. This guy's all good. He's going to turn into a block again. Because he's a mimic. Only when he's in combat will he fight. Because he's trying to give it the disguise. We need one big ass block. So basically what you want to do is basically just run around if you knock him up too high. When he grows his legs, that's the good time for what the... Hey, well he wasn't meant to do this, he's meant to like run at me. I think he bugged. No, no, he's all good, he is running, just very slow. But yeah, he's been the easiest of the three mini bosses. I'm doing them in... You know, like, you don't need any boxing him in and all that is not that hard at all but those red boxes that he spawns do do a lot of damage so don't get hit by them 
And last but not least, we're going to go to the hardest one now, which is the lovely Labyrinth Eye. This one you can box him up and do the same kind of tactic as you did for the first boss, but what you want to do is completely encase him, make the box quite big, and then what you want to do is be under him, so box him in, and then you want to be under. The reason for this is the things he shoots out the gears travel in a straight line from where he's looking, and he can't look directly down. So if he's looking like there and all these cogs are bouncing off the walls. It's very hard for them to go straight down after bouncing. So they're going to go bounce off the walls, but they never go directly straight down. I mean, they can, but it's very unlikely. So being directly under him with the walls, or she even case him like he did the first boss, uh, he's going to make him a little bit easier, or he can just do it normal way. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is like strafe left and right as you fight him, as I'll show now. So basically, just strafe left and right. Just making sure you don't just go in one direction too much. Dodge the cogs, and it's pretty easy. Go left, right, hit these cogs away. Straight left, right, left, right. As I said, he shoots them in straight lines. Hit the cogs away. Dodge the cogs. You don't really want to go into any caves like this, but I'm really good at dodging these, he says. <laughs> but as you can imagine, after a few bounces, it will get a bit crazy. And yes, you may take this boss all the way to another room. Uh, I have taken him into like another boss room and aggroed another boss at the same time, which is pretty bad. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And now that all the bosses are dead, you want to go head, head over to the main door. Go away. So now that you've killed all of the bosses, you want to head in to the main door. So you just right click on the door and it will open. He should be in the middle of the pedestal. Not sure what happened there. But this is the slider. You'll see his full name in a minute. But basically, this guy is kind of like the mini boss, except he does a lot more damage. And instead of him spawning boxes, it's only him that can move in one direction. And he doesn't have two phases, just one. Um, so the tactic is here. Seeing as he only moves in one direction, what you want to do is always be on his corners. So as long as you can see two of his faces, you won't be able to get hit. As long as you're always standing like this, he can't hit you. He will break even the divine blocks, which cannot be broken at all by no pick. Um, only in creative mode you can break them, or by this guy. So when you aggro him, you can only damage him with a pick. Obviously, you want to use your gravitite pickaxe. If you're using Xanite, which you can kill him with Xanite, you may need more than one. Maybe like three pickaxes, because the durability will wear out really quickly. You want to make sure you have enough pickaxes to kill him. But if you have a gravitite, it should be good. Plus you do more damage. If you can, while kiting him, jump to get those critical hits. You'll only do 5 damage-ish when you're normal hitting him. When you crit him, you can do 8 to 12 damage. That's pretty important because he has 500 health. you got to kite this bitch for a while. I did say he doesn't have two phases, but... <coughs> when he has low health, his eyes will go red and he'll do more damage. But apart from that, it's a pretty easy fight. Tank, spank, kite. But you don't really want to tank it. You want to just mainly kite it. But if you do get hit once or twice, you should be fine. It doesn't do, do too much damage. But anyway, enough of me talking. Let's get into it. But as I said, you want to make sure you can always see two faces and he will never be able to hit you. You just straight back and forward like there. Two faces, two faces, two faces, two faces. Just, just you know, opposite direction of which he moves. If he goes left, you go right. Easy kiting. Shouldn't get hit at all. Duh, duh, duh. Oh, man, now I'm screwed. Oh, no, I fell in a hole. What would I do? Don't panic. Don't panic. He, he won't kill you too fast. Just keep going with the two faces. I did this on purpose, by the way. Because, obviously, he will break blocks in the floor and you may fall down. But just don't panic. Keep going with the two faces. Just kite him really easily. Eventually, you'll get to these red blocks. They're basically bedrock. Even more bedrock than divine cards, which cannot be broken. As you see, his eye turns red and he will do more damage, but basically the same tactic. Just keep going for those two faces, make sure you can see two faces at all point, and he will not be able to hit you. Done. And then you get loads of these coins, you get loads of loot, and what did we get? We managed to get a Soaring Stone, which is a move speed companion. There are a couple of companions you can go over, you can get the hub teleporter. 
the main things you want to get are like the Valkyrie Lance, freaking amazing. Um, extended reach plus six damage. So it's the same as a Gravitite Sword, but it has like twice the range. So it's amazing. I'm just saying it's amazing. Uh, second weapon, the Hammer of Notch, it gives an area effect wave when you press right click. You shoot out a hammer, you'll get knocked back, and you'll push everything else back. And in like a 3x3, three three, you'll damage everything that travels near the ingot. <coughs> you get lightning knives, which when you throw them with right click, will spawn lightning like the Zephyrus on the Aether. You know, the black clouds, I, I'm sure you've seen them if you got to the dungeon. They'll spawn lightning and fire like the Zephyrus do. You also have the lightning sword, which will spawn lightning. Uh, that's obviously when you do damage, it will spawn lightning every now and then. Um, and then we have life shards, which increase your maximum health. This is quite a rare drop. Uh, it will just increase your total maximum health. You see one of the hearts goes orange there. We now have 11 life instead of... Oh no, we have 21 life instead of 20. We have 10 and a half hearts. Obviously, you can get quite a lot of those uh, if I just show shard of life. It does say t up to 10 life shards, so you can get 5 maximum health. So if you do want to keep killing this guy, more than welcome to. There are a couple of companions you can get. I'll show you. Companions. We can get the Ethereal Stone, which basically gives you invisibility permanently while your companion is alive. We have high steps. Basically, you get step assist. I don't know if any of you know what that is, but basically you can walk up steps without jumping. Soaring Stone, which gives you movement speed, which is like a 15% movement speed bonus, uh, which we got now. So basically you just right click and this guy goes on. And now uh, he'll just follow you. You can even rename him if I got my companion. And I name him Sanic the Hedgehog. Oh, I can't type today. Sanic the Hedgehog. Okay, we got Sanic the Hedgehog, he'll follow you around. Don't worry if this guy dies. He will respawn infinite. Infinitely. So this guy, especially when you're in the nether, loves to jump in lava. But don't worry about it. Sanic's cool, he's got infinite lives. Cats have nine lives, Sanic's got infinite. Uh, other than that, you can get a hub teleport. I would recommend you don't use this and wait till you get a transmutation table. As you see, it's got EMC. So it's really good for like last minute teleports if you're gonna die. This isn't hardcore. So if you do get a hub teleporter, or you may want to try and farm for a hub teleporter, they're really really good. And um, you do get five slider labyrinth totems from the quest. So you'll have five attempts plus any other natural spawning dungeons to get as much of this loot as you want if you want to farm the dungeon. Um, next we've got the Neptune set, which basically it says walk in water, but it makes you walk on water. It's kind of an English grammar mistake. And the Valkyrie chest, but it lets you grow wings. So let me put all this on. Uh, right click that on. Valkyrie sword, and then we get the booties. Gives you wings. So basically, you have wings. So uh, when you hold down spacebar, you'll be able to float. But it's kind of like the cow jump. You go up a certain distance and then fall. And you'll take no fall damage. So it's a really good set. Um, it's about the same armor as Gravitite. Not as close. You get It's basically like kind of Gravitite. Except you get like no fall damage. And obviously that cool little jump. It's not that bad. But I mean if you get the full set it's all good. And obviously Neptune's is, a bit, is the same as Valkyrie apart from your walking war. I would say the best set and weapons get is the Valkyrie. It's pretty damn good. Extended range, you can fly, you take no fall damage. It's just all round good. And Sanic is probably the best companion, just gotta say. Subassist is, wow, you can fly. You get mowers and Valkyrie sets. You can fly, you don't need step assist. Like... Speed boost is kind of good, you know, helps you run away from mobs. And the extended reach, really good against zombie pigmen. Other than that, there's not really too much else you can get from the boss. But yeah, hope this video guide has been 
good to help some of you people. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks again, family. Solix out.